Yo, what's going on, everybody? It is 3 p.m. here in Chicago, Illinois. That means it's time for another live stream. Today is Tuesday, March 7, no, 16th, 2021. And because it's a Trivia Tuesday, we're going to play a game today. Not trivia. We're going to play Name That Shoe. I've had that little Spanish flea song. Da -da 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 I've had that jingle like stuck in my head like all day today because I was putting together uh, the slides or the visuals to go with the game. Name that shoe. I, I believe this is round three of us playing this game where I will read off. I've like copied and pasted so you don't get to see like the web page that it came from. You don't get to see a picture of the shoe or anything. So it takes away a couple more of the potential clues. I'll read you just the copy that goes with uh, the manufacturer. A description on the on their website. I'll take out the trade names. And you'll have to guess what that shoe is. I think this is round three. I think it's going to be fun. I don't remember exactly when we played round two, but I think all the shoes to give a hint and to make sure that I don't repeat on shoes that I've already put in the game before. It's only going to be shoes that were relatively recently released. I think we'll see. I'm not sure. I think it'll be fun. I hope it'll be fun. I'm not going to promise fun. I, I don't want to over promise, but hopefully you guys will have a good time here. Before we get to the game though, let's say hi to everyone listening on the audio only version of the podcast. Don't worry. It won't be any more difficult for you, uh, for you guys. Cause it's not about seeing the pictures for this game. I will read out the entire description. Some are longer than others, but I'll read them out to you. And then I'll give you a chance to play along if you're listening to this on your run or on your commute or just in the background as you're getting some stuff done. Same thing for you guys watching on YouTube after the fact. You guys will be able to see everything too. And you can put in some guesses if you like. Uh, and I'd love, because I'd love to see that too. I love, I love wrong answers and I love good attempts at right answers as well. Uh, that always makes it interesting. So I think uh, for a game like this, don't overthink it. Just put in the first shoe that kind of comes to mind when you're reading or listening to the ad copy. But first, again, then the last thing I'll do before I get to the game is uh, we'll say hi to everyone who's here. Steve saying that the first one, the thumbnail is a Takumi Sen 7. Yes. So that one, actually playing the game a little bit differently, where you only see a picture of the shoe, and you could tell what uh, kind of shoe it is there. And it, that from the thumbnail, it is the Takumi Sen 7, which Martha is an expert on that shoe. I, I, oh, excuse me. I just had some tacos. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's a shoe that I'm, I'm having a hard time understanding where that one really fits into the Adidas lineup. It seems kind of like um, maybe a legacy shoe, an outlier, one that like, you know, there seems to be like a new like kind of like a uh, cohort of shoes going forward. And I don't know where the Takumi Sen fit, 7 fits into that, but you know, it's an interesting shoe. I think it always looks fantastic. All right. Chris Yao is also here, and he says that the shoe is the Adidas Wor Worcester. Wor I don't know how to say that. Worcester Blue Collar Grind. <laughs> um, and Philip Bourne says, there are so many different Adizera shoes. It could be the Adios, the Boston Pro, Prime, Takumi Sen. Which one is for which type of race? Yeah, that's, I mean, it seems like Adidas is really focused in, like, uh, I guess like distance, if you're thinking about 5K as distance to like longer distance, but not marathon. You know what I mean? I just don't feel like there's a lot. The Boston is the marathon racer in, in that group for me. I do like, I mean, the Adios, I don't know that I can race a marathon in that. I think people used to. Like from like from like Adios 4 and earlier, I think the Adios was their marathon racer. Since then, I think it's become a half marathon racer if you want like a racing flat feel. But I think people have also, because it's so low to the ground, have been using it for shorter distances. But it can be definitely confusing. KCA is stopping by before class and says, hope all is well. Awesome. And uh, all right. Charles Ventura says, awesome thumbnail. Listening later, though. Well, awesome, Charles. He says, he's going to guess the endorphin shift for shoe number three. <laughs> Very funny. Very funny. Um, yeah. Martha says, she, uh, I planned a 5K PR in that Takumi Sen. It has incredible grip, light as a feather. Don't feel it on the foot, but still provide some bounce and cushion. You know, I was, you know, what that reminds me of is I, you know, I, I've never bought a pair of the Onitsuka Tigers, like the, the Kill Bill yellow ones. I keep saying that I'm going to, and I end up looking at them and then I end up never buying them. But I was looking at them, at them again today. And I was like, you know, it'd be fun to just show up at, at like a 5k fun run and see what you can do. In those now, I know they're not designed for being run in the Takumi Sen is, but like it's you know, 
a leather shoe low to the ground. It's got like a, a herringbone outsole rubber pattern. But for a 5K, you know, you don't really need, you can get away with, not that you don't need, but you can get away with not having a lot underfoot. So, you know, and something that I, I think I'd, I'd like to do at some point, take some of these like pro tro shoes, you know, like, um, and uh, see if I can um, actually run in them. I think that'd be kind of fun. All right. Nicola Ferranetti says, first run today in the Hoka Mach 4. I love them. Very cool. And uh, Timothy Betts says, hey, everyone. Oh, Steve Arnberg says he broke out the catamounts yesterday for the slush and snow, and they're fun even on the road. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Awesome. I'm glad that you had a good time in them yesterday, Steve. Uh, I didn't get out yesterday in the snow, but I did get out today in like the remnants of the snow. But I did put on some trail shoes for that, and I felt like that was a good choice for me, too. Um, I did find some I, I did stay away from like the trail a little bit. I found some like dirt, some rocks, you know, to kind of run on some grass. Um, some softer surfaces got very wet because um, everything is just slushy and melting, but it was a fun time out there. All right. Ted and Ruth says, if I get the yellow Onitsuka Tigers, I got to wear the yellow tracksuit too. <laughs> uh, that'd be funny. That'd be funny. The question is, do I, for the hair, do I go with a Bruce Lee bowl cut or do I put on a, a blonde wig? That would be the question. Hmm. All right. Let's let me get started um, with uh, here we go with the game for today. Let me get it set up real quick here. Um, hold on, I gotta do this. I think to get it set up. Sorry, it's taking me a second. Uh, and share my desktop. Mm. All right, here we go. Here's the first one. Number one, Reed Morris already has his hand on the buzzer. He says, beat your time, then beat it again in this shoe. This high performance running shoe is packed with tech for the fastest runs. At the bottom, you get durable outsole traction and a carbon fiber plate. This innovative plate acts as a lever for maximum energy transfer at toe off. And for the long runs that outlast the daylight, you get 360 re reflectivity and lightweight midsole foam, giving you max cushioning with improved efficiency. This shoe is a breathable, form-fitting shoe for an effortless run. All right, let's see what kind of guesses we got here. Um, let me put this on like this real quick. Uh, no, here we go. This way. Um, Louis Pissarra says the Boston 9 is not the Boston 9. Uh, ben Wise thinks it's the Hover Machina. Is that how you're supposed to say that one? I think that's all. Um, New Betra says craft one. Ooh, that's an interesting one. Yeah, that's a good guess. Um, Sarah Mims thinks it's a velocity wind. Scott says carbon X2. Fenske says the rebel two. Hmm. Good guesses, but yeah, the rebel two doesn't have, doesn't have a plate, I believe. So that I don't think is going to be the right one. And then mm, Jason Dahl says Nike shoey mix shoe face. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. That's so funny. All right. Um, a lot of guesses for Carbon X2, but it is not the Carbon X2. Um, it is, uh, let me see if I get it. There we go. It is the DV8 Nitro. The DV8 Nitro. That was a, I'm, I'm pretty sure that one is not one, because that one, the, the description wouldn't have been up on the website the last time we played this game. So, yeah. Mm. Ooh, Nevetra said on Cloud Boom. That could be a good, good. That could definitely be one. Yeah. And Reed Morris, you had it. You had it. You were so close. The reflectivity sounds like Puma. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Dr. Josh thinks it was Healy's. <laughs> Do Healy's have, I mean, Healy's, I guess, would have to have some sort of plate or something in them for the, like the, the wheel mechanism to be in there too. So I don't know. I don't know if they would call it a plate. It probably just has some sort of, I don't know, chamber it sits in. I'm not sure. Um, all right. Scott says, none of us have run in that one. Yeah, I, I think mine come today. They're supposed to arrive today. So we'll see. As long as like none of these recent storms have held things up. I saw a picture of um, some of the storm footage in Colorado. The guys got dumped on like three feet of snow like overnight. And then, you know, you see pictures of like cars and trucks stuck and you're like, oh man, that's a lot of snow. 
And then I saw like a, a big truck that with like an Amazon Prime logo on the side. And I was like, no, not our deliveries. Now I know that other trucks normally carry all our stuff too. But like when it said like Amazon Prime, not that my Deviant Nitros are coming on, Am on an Amazon truck, but it just hits it home that it's like, ah, things might be delayed. All right. Let's go to the next one. <laughs> Chris Yao says he has the deviated septum. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's go to the next one. This one is our shoe provides luxurious comfort for the long run. This soft plus shoe features responsive underfoot foam partnered perfectly with a soft, selectively stretchy knit upper offering 360 degree comfort for high mileage, including heel cup technology that hugs the back of the foot for a snug supportive fit. This men's running shoe fully wraps the foot in pure comfort. And having read that, it makes me think, what does the women's description say? I don't know. All right. Uh, <laughs> Stevie 76 calling it the Nike Air Max 1493. Nice. Uh, ben Y thinks it's the Zumex Invincible. Mm. See, I think that we did the infinity. I do remember we did the infinity last time. And it was like, like the way they described it, it was really obvious that it was infinity. So I don't think, I didn't look at the invincible for this time. Um, all right. And, oh, Ben Browning says, it's St. Patrick's Day in Australia already. Oh, nice. My kids are like, they are so excited for St. Patrick's Day. The The baby's been counting it down for like the last 40 days since, th since, um, or however long it is between St. Patrick's Day and Valentine's Day. Like the next day, she's like, all right, dad, how many days till St. Patrick's Day now? And my daughter, older daughter, she's furiously decorating the house for St. Patrick's Day. They love St. Patrick's Day. I also enjoy St. Patrick's Day, but they they enjoy it too. It's pretty incredible. Uh, Matthew License thinks that she was the Ultra Boost 21. Uh, but you know what? I think Scott's got it right. It's the 1080 version 11. JC also had it pretty much right at the same time. Here we go. 1080 version 11. It looks really nice in that blue color. I think, is that a blue color or is that purple? I'm not sure. I can't tell. But that color looks nice. Let's see what else we had. Triumph 18, that could definitely be it too. I think the, the heel cup technology thing would have been the giveaway for me because like not a lot of people are calling like unless it's like an see the thing is the heel cup thing statement might have confused me and made me think it was an asics because i feel like asics is still talking about heel cup like trustic something system um but the heel cup uh new balance is talking about they call it the ultra heel that's what the i like redacted from it and just called it here cup heel cup scott says do i win a pair no no one wins any, no one wins anything not today um or right, yeah heel, heel cup is the giveaway <laughs> that'll be like the next merch. There'll just be a cup that says heel on it. Um, and Mark Chang Coco says the V11 looks like the V10. Oh, uh, I mean, it, it, if you haven't seen the V10 in a while, it does. But if you like look at the V10, you're like, oh my goodness, that shoe was weird looking. It's like looking at a sh at like a car that might have like uh, like the fishtails like, like like from like the 50s, like those old Cadillacs. And then you look at one, like an actual one from the time, and you're like, oh, man, those were giant. You know, it's kind of like really crazy. Um, but, yeah, like the heel part that flares out, it's just enormous on the 1080 version 10. It's much more, like, compacted down on the version 11. Um, but it's still, you know, very unique. Um, let's see. Reed Moore says, what's up with all this 360 stuff, like, the shoe goes around your whole foot. <laughs> it is interesting. Like I don't, I don't understand like the 360. Like, like in there, like yeah, all shoes go 360 around the heel. But are they talking about 360? Like in this, like I don't. What direction are they talking about? 360. Yeah, it it doesn't. It seems like a lot of like fancy buzzwords. I don't know. I don't know who was I talking to. Someone, someone that has a YouTube channel. I, I won't name them out in case they're not really supposed to be talking about it a lot but was, was saying that they were listening to a replay of the last time we played and um, was all, were reviewing copy for one of the brands um, coming up while listening to this game and how we were like teasing the copy. So I thought that that was pretty funny and hopefully that'll make it so like the, the copy is better. Um, all right. 
Oh, Louis Becerra says the interview with Killian is done. Yeah, I did not mean to schedule it over that. I know Seth had that big interview today. Um, but hopefully that went well. And welcome everybody that's coming in after the interview with Killian over on Seth's channel. Ronald Dre says, as far as the description goes, the knit upper gave it away with the heel. Mm -hmm. I'm not a huge fan of tight shoes, and I had looked into the 1080. Yeah, yeah. I feel like the knit, you know, a lot of people ran away from knit. Like after that, the year of like the Vaporfly, four per, like the second year of the Vaporfly, the 4%, then everything was knit for a little while. And then the only people that were still doing knit was like Brooks and the Levitate for like a, a, a year and a half, two years, it seemed. And now knit's back. And I'm glad knit's back because I like knit. I think it's good. All right. Sorry. Just drinking some, I uh, got some noon today. Um, all right. Ben Browning says, I love knit. See, I, lo I love knit too. I'm a big fan. <laughs> ben Y says, do the 361, 361 shoes have 361 degrees of coverage? Yeah. goes all the way around and then some, I think. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I, I have to look into that. I don't know why they named the, sh the company that. Um, yeah. Mark Chan Coco says, I'm still flying it. He's got his vapor fly flying it. That's a good one. Ed Chan says it's his favorite upper. Yeah, I think that um, are they gonna have more Vaporfly next percents like the, in the Nike by you this year? I don't know. That that'd be interesting. That I think that would probably be the only way that I would buy another next percent at this point. I don't know if I'm gonna pick up the next percent too, otherwise. Um all right. Let's see. Um let's get to the next one. Question number or shoe number three. <laughs> That's interesting. Prototype after prototype, innovation after innovation, testing after testing. Minus in the hot pursuit of the pinnacle harmonization of weight, cushioning, and responsiveness. Shoe. Say hello to incredible energy return. What shoe do you guys think this is? Uh, oh, New Betcher thinks this is the Brooks Beast. I look, I, you know what? I was looking at the Brooks website. No, no, wait, where is it? No, no, no. I think I was, I, I got an actual paper catalog from Brooks. I got a catalog from Brooks. Um, I got two other catalogs that I thought were like unusual. That I got one from, um, but Brooks was one of them. And like they had the beast in there. I'm like, I forgot that the Brooks beasts aren't just a training group. And there's an actual Bruce, Brooks beast shoe. Um, Russell thinks it's the Endorphin Pro. Ben White thinks it's the Nova Blast. I think we did the Nova Blast once, but that could be definitely one. I think that like I could see that being like in the like the Nova Blast two. This could be easily the Nova Blast two, um, but it's not the Nova Blast. Martha thinks it's the Mach Four. Ennis thinks it's the Rocket X. Uh, Mark Chan Coco thinks it's the Adios Pro. Evan Schwartz always so good at this game. He gets it right every single time. He's good at this. He's good at guess the runner. How does he do it? Man. I mean, I guess maybe at this point I waited long enough that you guys could have like typed it in and guessed it, but you'd have to like retype it up. So like, I feel like that's going to deter people, but Evan, good job, man. I don't know how he, does. he's just like a, I don't know. He always knows the answer. He always knows the answer. It's uncanny, but yes, it is. Um, where we go. Here we go. Where is it? Here we go. Um, yeah, how do I get to the next one? Sorry, there we go. It is the Ultra Boost 21. Great job, great job. Um, but you're not the only one that had it. Albert Lung had it as well. DJ Cracker 800, good job guys. <laughs> and Wessel V says, but the weight is like 12 ounces. Yeah, it's heavy, it's heavy. Um, you know, like I will say, I don't, uh, the screenshot that I grabbed didn't grab the weight, but it is like s somewhere close to that. Um, but yeah, it's it's a heavy shoe, and people do say that like, you don't notice the weight, and that's true for the most part. But then at, at the same time, it's still a, a heavy shoe. <laughs> um, but you know, I've been you know I've been I like it more than the Ultra Boost uh, twenty. Uh, wait, no, than the Ultra Boost nineteen. I like the Ultra Boost twenty a lot. The Ultra Boost nineteen I didn't like as much. And I think I like the 21 more than the 19. I think I like the 20 more than the 21. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> JC thinks it's because Evan Schwartz cheats. I don't know how he could cheat. 
I mean, in this game, I guess you could cheat because you could just type in like what I'm reading. But um, the guess the runner thing, that one's got to be hard. I don't know how you would cheat on that game. Uh, all right. Yeah, um, Scott says, yeah, <laughs> he did not get the 1080 version 11. That was Scott. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, every time Evan Schwartz guesses, though, he gets it right. He's like that guy when you're playing poker. Every time he bets, you're just like, ah, I fold. He's got the cards, you know? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's kind of what I meant by that one. Yeah, definitely, Scott, you got the 1080 version 11 one. Um, all right. Manish Tahal. Yanni says, I have 300 miles on the Saucony Endorphin Speed. It's the best shoe I've ever used from a speed and comfort standpoint. Do you think shoes like the Speed interfere with natural ability and pace? I don't think so. Not with the Speed. I just think that the shoe just I feel like it agrees with so many people. I don't know how it can be so good and also still be so broad. You know what I mean? Usually when shoes are like very broadly uh, enjoyed by a, a large population, they're like, it's pretty good. It's never like super excellent. But like the Speed is super excellent. And it works for so many people, it seems. So, like, that's, uh, I think, uh, the remarkable thing about it. But I don't think it's going to affect uh, the natural ability and pace. Um, that being said, you know, what most people, when I hear from coaches and trainers and, and physical therapists, uh, not that I have any one of those uh, that I hire or work with personally, but when I hear them talking in podcasts and in interviews, it seems like, you know, they all really like it when you have a variety of shoes, training surfaces, and like uh, elevations. So not not all flat, not all like just running on mountains, like a variety of things um, to make sure that, you know, any potential problems that may develop from one particular type of surface or pace or shoe don't really develop as much. Uh, all right. Mm -hmm. Ed Chan says he's going to use his hot pursuit of the pinnacle of harmonization for my next Strava run. <laughs> I mean, you know, when I when you read that out of context, you're like, this has got to be a Mizuno or maybe an Asics. Because I was like, this sounds like something that would come from one of the Japanese brands. It's like straight up. Like as I was reading it, I'm like, is this the new Wave Sky? But, um, and I forgot because as I was reading, I forgot. And then I was like, oh, no, I remember which one it was. So it's, it's interesting the way that they, they pull it, you know, like who, who wrote it? Does that, I mean, I, I think a lot of you run in the ultra boost 21. Like, I don't know if any of you guys, when you, and like, it doesn't resonate, you know? So, and if I hadn't run in the ultra boost 21, I'm not sure that this would get me to buy it, you know? So like, it doesn't help me understand the shoe and it doesn't make me want to buy it. So like, I don't, I don't know. Is it effective? Maybe I'm not sure. All right, let's get to uh, the next one. All right, this one gets a little bit longer. The trail runner that started it all continues to evolve. With the shoe, you get all the legacy with all the updates. For the first time, the shoe features the responsive foam midsole and the outsole, trademark outsole returns, ready to conquer all types of trails. And an updated rock plate brings an extra layer of rock protection. All right. Um, Brett Reed thinks it's the Peg Trail 2. Ross Paul thinks it's the Hoka Tort 2. Martha thinks it's the Solomon Shoe. Ooh, you guys got it already, though. You guys got it pretty quick. Um, yeah. Desiree says, Desiree maybe, says Lone Peak 5. That is correct. Uh, man, I always mess it up. I'm trying to switch back and forth between all these tabs. All right, Lone Peak 5. That is the shoe. Sarah Mims thought it was a speed goal. Those are all very, very good guesses. Uh, Matthew Lai says the Brooks Catamount. I feel like with the Brooks Catamount, I, I don't know if we've done that one, but I would expect if they don't talk about DNA Flash, but I guess they did talk about the foam in here, but the Catamount was a V1, a version one shoe. So it didn't have a legacy to look back on. So that, that was like kind of one hint in it. But otherwise it was kind of like pretty generic because all the trail shoes, because it mentioned it was a trail shoe, and all the trail shoes tend to have some sort of trademark for their outsole. Not necessarily the rubber, but like the lug pattern. Or I don't, I'm not sure. Because like, yeah. Because like the Lone Peak 5, for example, has Trail Claws, TM, and Max Track, TM. So like exactly what the difference is between those two things, I'm not exactly sure. The Ultra Superior has Trail, has Max Track, 
max track, but not trail claws. The outsole patterns look somewhat sim similar, but the lone peak is, is definitely a bit like gnarlier. So um, yeah, who knows? Like, yeah, as like someone that is not super into trails, a lot of these terms just get a little bit lost on me. And it's been interesting to try and like discern it all. Martha says, what all did it start? Uh, it started, uh, I think the Lone Peak was Ultra's first shoe. So I think that's where they started. They started out running uh, races in um, in uh, Ultra, Ultra, U-L-T-R-A and trail races. Um, in response, I think, not, is it, was it in response? to it it came after hoka right so um yeah and ed chan says like what did it start um yeah i mean they were zero drop i i don't know what heel drop shoes were but i think shoes were going towards the way of hoka they had gone from like you know born to run mcdougal and, and minimalist shoes um i think before mcdougal like wasn't it like uh was it rockport in his book, they talk about like Rockport, like the, like the weird like uh, dress shoe company, had made like a trail shoe, and they tried to give it to some runners, and like they fell apart on their shoes or something like that on their feet. Um, so things were like that, like basically like hiking boots, and then um, it became minimalist after McDougal, and then it became Hoka after that, and then it became Zero Drop after that not to say that everyone in the trail community went that way but i think that's my understanding of some some, some of the historical progression mm, yeah uh, <laughs> um sean marshall says trivia question if you run slow but your outfit is on target are you actually fast um yeah <laughs> i think so uh, maybe um, Ted and Ruth says, my shoe knowledge is terrible. I'm on zero point so far. That's okay. It's okay. It's about playing a game, not, not necessarily about winning. Um, all right. Mm, MC1796 says, anyone see the teaser for the A6 Carbon Marathon shoe? Their website has a silhouette with the tag, fast isn't far. Mm, I haven't seen it on A6 yet. I saw, because who was it that mentioned here? That um, Roadrunner Sports had a placeholder for a new, uh, that, what is it, Magic? speed or something like that i forget the name of the shoe but it's supposed to be coming out later this month in a couple weeks uh, i think less than two weeks now and uh carbon plated shoe 26 millimeter stack height five millimeter drop fresh foam uh ff blast not fresh foam flight foam or ff blast with a, a four foot carbon which i think to me signals that they're using it for stability and not um propulsion um or springiness so it could be interesting it could be like the nova blast or, or like the a6 version of the peg turbo that i've been looking for which i don't think that like the what is it road blast and dyna blast i don't think those are it so it'll be interesting to see i'm excited for that um but i don't know if that's the same thing you're talking about 17 mc 1796 could be we'll see all right um yeah i think this Mar end of march is going to be an interesting time um, I don't remember end of March being such an interesting time for shoes. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure if, um, people are like catching up or, or I don't know what it is like, uh, with like COVID production hitches, like getting maybe all ironed out. Now people are like, let's release these shoes now. I'm not sure. I don't usually remember March and April being that exciting of a time. Usually it's more towards June and July, but I'm not going to complain. That's for sure. Um, all right. Um, ooh, 17, MC1796 says, the one that he's talking about on the ASICS website says, is it looks different. It has FF Blast Turbo, and the price tag is much higher, 250 Hmm, maybe that's the prototype shoe. Did, didn't we talk about it yesterday? It was supposed to be meta something. We talked about that. I thought we talked about that yesterday, too. You guys have been keeping me up to date on the ASICS news. But they've had a lot of shoes and testing the past couple of marathons that have been going on. So I'm interested. I'm interested. I'm super interested to see what ASICS is going to bring. Because I feel like that's going to be like the, that's going to be like, the, you know, starting us off hot for the year 2021. I think it's going to be a great year for marathon racing shoes. Ooh, Metasky. Metasky. 
Yeah, that's right. We were like something, something sky. It felt very Japanese in the name. Yeah, okay, cool. Mm, all right, let's get to, I think this is number five. I'm not sure. I lost track of the slide numbers, guys. All right, this one is a long one, so, so bear with me. Uh, positioned as an endurance racer, the shoe delivers the same propulsive speed as its predecessor, an adaptable silhouette geared for training and racing alike. Engineered with a responsive carbon fiber plate and aggressive rocker, this performance shoe is a formidable competitor. The epitome of long range weaponry, the shoe pairs softer, lighter foam with the same rubberized foam outsole as the last iteration. Scrutinized with a focus on fit, the shoe employs a refined collar shape, notched tongue, an engineered mesh upper with embroidered TPU yarns and extra reinforcement around the laces. Get ready for an inherently soft, stable, and responsive ride. All right, what do we got? Um, oh man, a lot of you guys got it all right already. Yeah, how'd you guys do that? Um, let's see, I'm gonna skip some of the right answers. We'll go to some of the wrong answers first. Ross Paul thinks it's the Vapor Fly 2. That could be, I could see that. I could see that. It seems a little bit wordy. Uh, for for Nike for the next percent too. Ben Y thinks it's the North Face Vective. Oh, I don't think I've read a description for the Vective yet. Hmm, but that could be it too. But remember, it says that there was a. Um, it delivers the same propulsive speed as its predecessor. So it's a version, at least a version two shoe. <laughs> In the long run, yeah, this is the word that really caught my attention as well. Long range weaponry. I mean, just that phrase, long range weaponry is a bit of a tongue twister, I gotta say. Um, but like, it's <laughs> like people say like, it's in your quiver, in your arsenal. So like th that language is there, but it's like to actually call it like the epitome of long range, rep we long range weaponry. But I guess if you think about the name of the shoe, long range weaponry kind of kind of makes sense. Albert thinks it's the Endo Pro and um, Brett Reed says there's a rocker in there. So it's a Hoka, yep. And Evan says, TPU yarn, so fancy. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's go back and see who had it first, though. Uh, for the correct uh, answer, it was... Um, New Vetra says, Carbon X2, and that is correct. Here we go. And did you guys see this? Like, um, Hoka put out, like, a bunch of shoes in this, like, white midsole and like cream color or like kind of like like off-white um like lightly gray upper looks fantastic i want all of them except i don't want all those shoes because i already have a lot of them but like hmm, that's a nice collection you know it always I, I feel like it annoys me when like the i know like the different shoes get released at different times but like last year my favorite thing of last year two favorite things of last year both came from Saucony. Saucony did the Endorphin series. All the shoes like had like the same look, different shoes, same look, like design language carries through. It makes sense as a collection, right? And they also did Saucony in earlier in the year, the blackout collection, which was black up, blacked out uppers, gray midsoles. And I thought it looked fantastic. It was in the Canvara. It was in the Freedom. It was in the Triumph. Uh, it didn't make it to the ride, which was, I feel like, uh, then I would have had the whole set and been perfect, but I like it when there's more like consistency throughout the line. Nike usually does a really good job about that too. Adidas does sometimes a pretty good job ab ab about it. Um, some other years are not as consistent, although like there usually is a pretty consistent design language across all Adidas across multiple years usually. But, um, because their designs tend to be a little bit more conservative with the occasional like, you know, flare. But um, I like it when there's more like consistency across the line and like, or when they release ca coll capsule collections or like something like what they're doing with the icon pack at Saucony with like the anniversary of the jazz. But I just feel like they waited too long for this one. It should have been earlier. I know like they have to wait for spring since these are white, but yeah. Martha says the Hoka speed bot boat. Um, yeah. I mean, I like, I like the carbon X too. I like it more for training, fast training than, than racing per se. It doesn't give me like a racer feel to it, but I really enjoyed it the other day for, um, some threshold repeats. And, um, 
what I the the main reason I, I reached for the Carbon X2 the other day is something that happens, and I'm not sure. I've talked to you guys before about like how I sometimes get like what seems kind of like a um, uh, Morton's neuroma. I get that pain under the ball of my foot. Usually, sometimes it's my left foot. Sometimes it's my right foot. It's not often, but every once in a while it happens. It sticks around for like a couple of runs, not throughout an entire run either. Just like it'll show up for a little while and then go away. It tends to happen on shoes that have a lot of, I mean, the the shoe that happens most frequently in is Nike shoes with a lot of React in the midsole. And I don't know if it's the React when it's real thick or if it's the size of the toe box, which tends to be a little bit narrow. But it started like bothering me a little bit in between. I had two workouts last week after the first, like on a rest day, it started to show up. And I was like, uh, I'm going to try running in a shoe that has a little bit wider of a toe box uh for my workout today and the, so the carbon x2 was the choice and it does have a little bit more room in there and i had no problem issues whatsoever um so i think just for me it's i think when my toes are getting scrunched a little bit that may make it more likely to happen so like having some wider op or roomier options is always really nice all right um let's see what else we got here uh, not really, I guess it's neuroma annoying. <laughs> um, MC1796 says, what shoes actually give you a racer feel for the marathon? Uh, Next Percent, Adios Pro. Next Percent certainly do. Adios Pro does it. Endorphin uh, Pro definitely does it as well. Um, I'd say the Meta Racer gives me that feel too because uh, it's just so low to the ground. So it's just like a different kind of racer feel than those other taller shoes. Um, shoes that don't give it to me as much is like the Fuel Cell TC, even the RC Elite. Uh, I only have the version one. It doesn't feel like a race shoe to me all the time. Yeah, I don't know why it doesn't. Um, like the Carbon X2 doesn't. Um, I'm trying to think of what other of the carbon plated shoes are out there that are like, these feel fast but I don't know if they feel like race day fast. Like I would say the CTM ultra carbon doesn't feel race day fast, but I think it's cause it's not really meant for like road. It's not meant for road marathon racing. So yeah. Um, all right. Let's see. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Lauren says that's the Hoka aircraft carrier. It is a bit, is it a wide, it is a wider one, but I feel like the Carbon X one was it had a just a, I think it had just as wide of a platform that you like landed on in terms of like your foot, like the footprint, um, or like what the footprint looked like on the ground. But like the upper, it just went really narrow, like on top. There was no volume in the toe box, and it was, it was a very really strange fit. Mm. All right. Uh, let's do one more. I got a, I got a, I got a bonus for you guys. All right. The bonus is that it's not, it's not a running shoe. So here we go. Um, here's the bonus round for today. An icon reborn building on decades of love from runners and seeker fans alike. The shoe franchise celebrates 40 years looking and feeling finer than ever introducing the shoe honoring the original's look and feel with a few upgrades to ensure future gens covet this style the same way we have. All right, any guesses on this one? Dr. Funk thinks this is the Jordan Retro 3. Just a hint, I'm probably never gonna ask a Jordan question. I grew up in New Jersey, I grew up watching the Knicks. Um, so I've never worn a pair of Jordans before, never owned a pair of Jordans before. I probably never put on, a, I'll probably never put on a pair of Jordans, just to say. Um, Ben Browning wants to know, is there an orange Trump 2024 colorway for the old eight? <laughs> uh, I, I don't know about that. Um, all right. All right. Let's see. Uh, new better things. Reebok classic. That's a good guess. Very good guess. Um, Jay Jones and Sean Marshall. I think it's the jazz. Um, Dr. Josh says Saucony. Um, all right. Shan says Birkenhead. Yeah, Dr. Josh says the Saucony one. Desiree says it's the Crocs. Where'd it go? 
Uh, I think we did crack some, right? That might have been the bonus round, I think, for, for the first time we played, or maybe the second one. But yeah, uh, not, not today. All right. The, and Jason Doss says Sambas. That's a good, that's a really good guess. But the correct answer is, and we already heard it, the Jazz 81. So that's the one, which I think looks nice. And I think the icon word gave it away uh, maybe a little bit, or it was a hint, because um, I did mention like the Saucony icon pack, um, which I got to tell you, like the, what is it? The Kinvara 12 in the icon pack looks amazing. I can't decide whether or not to get that. I'm going to get one of those eventually. I usually don't get, when I get, I don't always get a Kinvara. Usually last year I got it early, but I don't know seems early to get a Kinvara, but I'll be getting the Kinvara soon. I can't decide whether I want it in the black. The black one looks nice. Or the, the icon pack. They both look really good. Um, all right. Nike Waffle would also have been a really good, uh, also a very good guess, but it's the Jazz. Now, I you know what? I don't remember. I don't remember, like, like seeing this silhouette growing up. Maybe it's because I did grow up on the East Coast, and everything was, like, um, like all white, the all white Reebok, um, whatever like that shoe is that has kind of this shape. Um, I saw a lot of Air Force Ones, you know, but like I never saw, uh, and I did see like a lot of Sambas as far as like Adidas went, but I don't, I don't really remember seeing Saucony Jazz, which is weird because it's an East Coast company, it, you know, but like an 81, you know, I don't know. And that would have been, it would have been in like version 10 when I was like, you know, in like middle school. So like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. Let's see. Um, isn't that the 1981? Isn't that the era of chips? <laughs> the, is that when chips came out? Um, that show was good. That, show, that was a weird show, but I liked it. You know, I've been thinking a lot about um, uh, Dukes of Hazard lately. Like the show with like Bob, Boss Hog and the General Lee and all that kind of stuff. Mm, yeah, it's been another show from I think maybe that was a little bit before that time. I think I don't know. Oh, I, I, I mean, in '81 I was two years old, so I, the the original jazz is not quite my time. Uh, but yeah, uh, <laughs> Michael doesn't always get a Kimbara. All he does it it's in black. I is that true? I think it is. I think every Kimbara I've had is a black one. <laughs> so I, maybe I'll have to keep keep that uh, together. Um, yeah, Christian has says, damn, that shoe is tiny. Would, would fit my daughter perfectly. She's like 5'2". It, it always looks like it's going to be real small, right? Like, I mean, they, they make it in all sorts of sizes, but just the way it looks, like the way it's like stacked up, it does look like it's going to be like, oh man, this is not going to be a comfortable shoe to wear, right? Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I don't know. I'm, I mean, I don't, I don't have casual shoes. Uh, I don't really wear that many casual shoes, but like that one I could see picking up. Now, like, I'm, you know, I think they, do they make that one with a gum sole? See, then then I'd probably pick that up. That looks nice. I like the navy. Was that like navy color? It looks good. All right. Uh, yeah, let's see what else we got here. Uh, Jeff Elliott turned eight in 81. Yeah, I was born in 79, late, late in 79. Mm. Kurt Siege says the big ones like that were this and the Brooks Vantage. I'm not even familiar with that at all. I'm going to have to like look that up. Hmm. Hmm. Reed Morris says he's off to run. Thanks, Cole. All right. See you later. See you later, Reed. Um, yeah. Sean Marshall has five pair in the closet. Yeah. You know, I think that like the, for some reason, I feel like the Saucony, like they call them, what do they call their casual shoes? The, the originals. Saucony originals seem to be very popular. I don't know. Wait, Sean, you're not in the West Coast, though. I was going to say, like, are you? Wait, Sean, I don't think you're West Coast, are you? I was going to say that I feel like on the West Coast, they seem to be real popular. I don't know. Like, I don't, I didn't know anyone growing up that had Saucony. Like, it's, yeah, it's like a brand that I only heard of, like, a couple, a few years ago, I feel like. I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> Steve Zane says, date of birth, 1979, social security number. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Uh, La Pizza's here. What's going on, La Pizza? Good to see you. I, I love whenever you're here because, well, it's good to have you here, but I also love seeing that picture. I don't know. Pictures of, picture, pictures of pizza make me want to eat pizza, and that always makes me happy. 
Um, all right. Mm. Dr. Fox 1216 says, I just remember the shoes that you put air into help you jump higher. <laughs> Uh, all right. Um, oh, Shannon says, Co, your fangirls and boys need to know what shoes for the AK. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be running in the Adios Pro for the AK. I think it might be a little bit overkill. I could probably, you know, it's going to be like the Meta Racer, I think, is another really good choice. But I, I feel like, you know, you're getting a real nice bouncy springing sensation from the Adios Pro. And I really like that one. The endor I did I think I used the endorphin pro when I did the trials of miles like that virtual like cross country tournament thing um I did the, I think I used the endorphin pro on that one and that worked out really well cuz I was on like concrete sidewalks um and that sp level of like speed or effort um I think suits the endorphin pro really well so I think that would also be a really good shoe um but I think I'm going to go with the Adios pro I'm pretty sure I'm going to go with the Adios pro on it I'll, I'll st I'm still open to other ideas, but I'm pretty sure it's Adios Pro. All right. Uh, I think that's a good place to leave it for today, guys. Uh, tomorrow's video is going to be talking about, um, you know what? I'm not sure what we're talking about. I think we're talking about the race plan for tomorrow. So we'll talk about the shoes, talk about kind of pricing strategy for like the, the 8K, where I'm going to go kind of, or what I'm thinking generally. Um, looking at the weather, that kind of thing. So we'll kind of talk about that. That'll be for tomorrow. So we'll talk about that a little bit more in terms of shoot choice and all that other stuff. And then we'll do another live stream. Same time as today, 3 p.m. Central Time. Hopefully I'll see you guys back here tomorrow. In the meantime, be safe out there, everybody.